Hi, my name is Jason. Um, this is uh, the class project for EEL 6509 Wireless Communications. Uh, this project was using software-defined radio to create a QPSK modulator and demodulator. So I'm going to talk about what SDR is, what the proposal actually involved, the modulation scheme, the goals of the project, and how it was completed. So software-defined radio is a platform where traditional radio or hardware components are replaced by software. So the mixers, filter, amplifiers, and modulators, demodulators. So basically we're replacing specialized, often ASIC solutions with uh, software signal processing solutions such as GNU Radio, which is free software development kit uh, that provides signal processing for SDR devices. And our base uh, processing platform is a Z-Board. A Z-Board is an all-programmable system-on-chip Zinc 7020 development kit. It has uh, two hardcore ARM processors on it, as well as a very large FPGA fabric and uh, high-speed axial interconnects, interconnects connecting them. So with this project, we're running Linux off of the ARM cores, and we're doing all our processing in the actual ARM cores. We did not use the FPGA for this. So the SDR device we're using is the FM Comms 3 FMC board. It's uh, 70 megahertz to 6 gigahertz tunable range, has wide channel bandwidth, uh, full duplex communications, four built-in FIR interpolation and decimation filters, as well as programmable low-pass filters. Uh, so for this, we're actually using 2.4 gigahertz as our uh, as our communications frequency and 20 megabyte bandwidth. Um, the whole point of putting this on a Z board is that you can create many different modulation or demodulation schemes using GNU radio or actually using the FPGA itself. Um, you can, if you use the FPGA, you can feasibly hardware accelerate your operation and you can improve reliability by creating redundant methods within the FPGA such as placing them in partial regions for rebuilding them. So the proposal here of this project is to implement a QPSK modulation demodulation scheme completely software in GNU radio. Uh, the scheme is then going to be demonstrated in pure software implementation done locally on a computer and then the actual physical transmission scheme with these two devices and the process is going to be documented. So just in general, QPSK is quaternary phase shift keying. Uh, essentially what we're doing is we're taking two bits of data. Um, each uh, bit pair represents a possible phase of a sinusoid and QPSK is about as basic, basic as you can go without doing uh, binary phase shift keying. Um, so it has, compared to higher forms of PSKs, it has lower bandwidth but the inner symbol interference is a lot better because there's not as much data being sent out. So when you look at the constellation, which is this diagram here in the bottom right, um, with all the noise in the channel, these dots are going to be kind of in a standard uh, statistical deviation around these ideal points. So if QPSK, since there's only four points, it's fairly easy to find what the symbol is supposed to mean. In higher forms of PSK, where you have more symbols on this uh, phase chart, you're going to run into more issues and you have to have a really clean channel to communicate. Um, so again, for QPSK, it's just two channels, uh, I and Q being the real and imaginary axes here, and two possible bits of data at a time. So the approach taken for this project is using Z-Board as our test bed. Um, the FM Comms 3 board has IP cores used to communicate with it, provided by analog that we place into the programmable logic region of the device. Um, we built, I built Lenaro Linux on the device. Lenaro communicates with those IP cores provided by analog to actually interface with the SDR device itself. And then GNU Radio is compiled for the ARM architecture and device drivers were provided for GNU Radio to speak to those IP cores. Uh, in addition to that, the uh, GNU Radio uh, was cross-compiled in VirtualBox so that all the designs for a GNU Radio Companion could be done um, offline, not on the actual Z board because it takes a very long time to compile anything. 
Uh, after that, uh, verifying the QPSK modulation in two ways. First is making an octave script, um, showing that we can modulate the data and showing the expected outcome. And then also building a QPSK modular demodulator purely in software on my computer. And this, the point of this is that we can show that no matter what I set the input to, um, I'll be able to see the output after I go through the entire modulation. And we'll see that in detail. And then finally, the meat of the project, which is implementing the whole thing into hardware. Um, so basically we're taking the software version, replacing the source and syncs with the FM comm source and syncs, and then doing a little bit of data manipulation, prepare it to be transferred over the uh, wireless. So Octave uh, was the first thing. I took a 28-bit input stream, split into two channels, converted each channel to a bipolar non-return zero format. Um, then I use 16 kilohertz baseband, kind of arbitrarily, to modulate each of those channels. One is with a cosine, the other is with the sinusoid. And then combine each of those channels to um, a normal a signal and then normalize it. So the top image here is the combined two channels into the final signal. Um, and then these two are the channels individually, I on the left and Q on the right. And this red line is the actual input data so it's going from high to low and you can see that every transition you can hit this phase transition the same for q channel so the whole point of this again is that as we transition from one bit to the next we're conveying this um, through the analog wave by switching the phase so we can see that's working nicely so i started building the new radio implementation this is the transmission side so what's going on here is again, I'm using these 16 kilohertz baseband, cosine, and sinusoids. Um, for this particular one, I used for the first channel, which is always on, and for the other channel, alternating between on and off. And then I have these interpolation blocks here. So it's interpolating each of these individual values by 400. The purpose of this is to be able to hold it long enough to get enough samples from my sinusoid. So I'm holding it, I'm multiplying by all my sinusoidal samples, and then I'm adding both of those channels together along with some noise just to make the uh, transmission a little more interesting. And then throttling it is just for CPU resources. And then I'm syncing that into two plots. Uh, one is just a regular scope plot to see the actual wave, and the other is a fast Fourier transform plot so that we can see the spectrum. So on the left is the outputs without noise. Uh, we can see a transition right there in the signal, and we can see that our FFT is centered nearly around 16 kilohertz. And on the right with noise, um, the symbol, signal doesn't look like much, um, but we can still see that most of our signal content is right here within 16 kilohertz. Um, on the reception side, I'm taking that wave we just looked at with noise right here, and then I'm multiplying it twice in two separate channels, each with the same sine and cosine that was used in the transmission scheme. I'm then filtering it to 16 kilohertz, which is our baseband, um, just to get rid of a lot of that noise we saw previously in the uh, upper end of the FFT. And then the threshold is just to make it look nice for our plot. So what we end up seeing is uh, two channels, one which was always on is shown here as the green channel and the alternating one is shown as the blue channel so it was transmitting uh, what we put into it so that's nice it worked out so next is moving this into hardware um, <clears throat> so essentially the exact same uh, plot as before the only difference is i'm no longer adding these together that's actually being done by the device itself what I am doing is uh, scaling it by 2048, which is 2 to the 11th. And I'm doing this because the DAC on the actual device is 12-bit uh, signed. <clears throat> so I had to prepare it to go through there. I actually spent a lot of time on that, um, not realizing I needed to do that and just getting noise out on the other end. Um, in addition to that, uh, I had to interpolate by a factor of 10 to get the sample rate where it needs to be for the device itself. It's a little bit higher than the minimum input, but 
Um, it's uh, completely functional. And then just a little bit about interpolating. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm taking this uh, initial wave here and then I'm adding all these incremental values and then in the SDR device it actually has a smoothing filter to clean that up a bit better. And uh, one of the points of doing this is to get rid of these extra signal images. So reception side, um, I'm taking my data out, I'm decimating it by a factor of 10 to keep everything even. I did all my actual work in floating points, so I just had to convert that. And then otherwise it's the same. I'm multiplying it by the same source sinusoids, I'm filtering it, and then I'm setting it up for uh, viewing nicely. The difference here with these TCP syncs is since the Z board's a headless device, I had to do everything through uh, UART terminals. I needed a way to actually visualize my data, so I connected one of the Z boards to uh, with an Ethernet cable to my computer, and then I have another GNU radio script that's just connecting to these TCP syncs and visualizing it there. So that's what I described here. This is what's going on in the computer. Um, it's connected to that uh, sync and connecting from there directly to a scope. Um, I actually made a FM one too, but we're not showing that here. Um, on the bottom here is what you're actually seeing uh, through the UART sessions. Uh, on the left is the transmission. So you're seeing this connects um, after I after I run the script starting it, you have to start the IIO device drivers and then connect to the SDR board itself here. Um, and then it starts running. And the same on the right here for the rece reception scheme. Uh, here's a picture of the setup. So these are my two Z boards and the two SDR drivers, cards I mean, and the Ethernet cable connecting to my computer where I'm visualizing on the other end. So this is the output from the physical transmission, um, showing an alternating scheme, which is what was input into it. Uh, I actually only showed one channel here. If I go back, you can see I'm only connected to one of these, even though I had myself set up for two. Uh, the reason being is just to simplify the output. Um, I just wanted to make sure that it was actually running correctly. And I could do that much easier if one channel as opposed to two. So the problems with this, are um, the hardest parts of it, I guess, were uh, setting up the SDR environment on the Z board. It took a long time because a lot of it wasn't cross compilable. Actually, I would say a couple days worth of the Z board just building and making files locally. Uh, so the device driver took a long time to set properly. Um, there was an order that everything needed to be installed in that I messed up a couple times. And then actually setting up the network for the sync and source T, or TCP uh, took a bit of time as well. Um, validating the QPS scheme through Octave was rather quick, as well as doing it through GNU Radio. Once Octave script was made, the GNU Radio was pretty much a breeze because it's very simple to connect a few blocks. Um, once I switched out to hardware, it wasn't so simple. It took more time uh, accurately setting up the sample rates, for the SDR device to hit its minimum requirements, uh, as well as figuring out how to scale the data properly for the digital analog converter. Um, <clears throat> and the interpolation and decimation filters took time to set those all up. Those were all set up uh, through scripting. So future works for uh, this project, or what could be done with it, is to uh, actually do range testing to see how far I can pull these Z boards apart before I start just losing my signal integrity entirely. Um, we can do power testing. These uh, SDR devices are set to transmit at about uh, six milliwatts. Um, well, six milliwatts is what the board itself was drawing with everything. So that's the Z board plus the FM comms, FMC board um, was drawing six milliwatts. So the transmission power had to be slightly less than that, but six milliwatts is still pretty good for this. Um, and then creating the same transmission scheme in VHDL to create IP core. So 
in GNU Radio, you can make custom blocks. So instead of doing all that work where we saw, you know, I don't even know how many, there was two multipliers, two adders, uh, or two multipliers, an add, two sinusoids, um, all that could be replaced with one block if you create an IP quorum BHDL. So that'd be the next move. Um, overall though, this was a really fun project to work on. It was exciting, it was cool to actually see it work. And I had my doubts for a while. Um, and, uh, and I have more information about it online. So please check out the report and thank you for listening.